In the year 1770, one Lieutenant James Cook of Her Majesty's Royal Navy discovered Australia, or to be more precise, claimed it for England. He almost didn't make it back to England to report his discovery for two near disasters along what is now the Queensland coast almost put an end to his illustrious career and left Australia for someone else to discover. The first incident occurred off the central Queensland coast when Cook's ship the Endeavour struck a reef and had to be beached for repairs. The small village that grew there in later years called itself 1770 in honour of their first, though somewhat reluctant, visitor. It is situated at the mouth of a picturesque inlet and is a popular fishing spot. The nearby campground also welcomes all visitors, be they from overseas or local. This large goanna knows that there is food around here somewhere, if only he could find it. Apart from bushwalking, activities here tend to focus mainly on the water. And at the end of the day, the setting sun can usually be relied upon to put on a pretty good show. With his ship now patched up and refloated, Cook continued his journey up the Queensland coast until just north of what is now Port Douglas, it happened again. The poor old endeavour struck another reef. Cook must have been getting more than a little upset by now for he called the nearby headland Cape Tribulation and the mountain behind it Mount Misery. Today, Cape Tribulation is a mecca for all those who really want to get away from it all. Its appeal is due mainly to the fact that it is surrounded by the World Heritage listed Dane Tree Rainforest with its abundant wildlife and natural wonders. While humans may flee in terror from this fellow, these tiny mudskippers appear quite unconcerned about their fearsome neighbour. While we can marvel at the wonders of the Cape Tribulation Rainforest, Cook was again left with the problem of keeping his ship afloat and finding a safe place to beach the Endeavour for repairs. Everything they could do without was thrown overboard, including the ship's cannons and anchor, which in recent years have been recovered and put on display in the Cook Museum.
With a leadership, Cook was now able to struggle further north, where he again found a safe inlet at the mouth of a large river. Here he was able to beach the endeavour for the necessary repairs. He then named the river after his ship. This is the place where Cooktown now stands. The town very much remembers its first European visitor and every year it stages a reenactment of that historic day which has become a carnival weekend. Donkeys, no, but it was here that Cook and his party first encountered what were referred to as giant leaping mice. And the sighting of a fruit bat for the very first time convinced one terrified crewman that he had seen the devil. <laughs> 